Hello everyone, and welcome back to Hakuoki, Demon of the Fleeting Blade. No, Demon of the Fleeting Blossom. I do that every time. Anyway, thank you for joining us, and uh, as just to say it one more time, this is a Patreon-funded Let's Play by Sprawl Rat, and they have been so kind to keep this going and, and helping me get through this. And so, I'm excited to do more. Anyway, when we last left off, uh, I think we had some bad news, because our, our friend, who was like the really powerful one but didn't say a lot, and definitely wasn't interested in dating us, and so I'm, I didn't pay too much attention to him, but he is MIA. He has been injured on the field of battle, um, but I don't care because I'm here to date boys. Uh, also, meanwhile, back in the frat house, uh, we've been kind of weirdly talked to by pretty much all of the guys, and uh, so hopefully that will not continue as much, but who knows. Oh well. It was later that day that Hijikata called for me. Excuse me? I had been relieved to find Okita and Heisuke had been summoned along with me. A private conversation with only myself and Hijikata would have been cause for a significant case of nerves. I would have gotten the jitters. Yeah, yeah it's still ellipses, just that's that's most of what Chizuru says. Just dot dot dot. I was still trying to puzzle out what to say when Hijikata began to speak, his voice cold as tempered steel. You can leave the compound. Really? This announcement was so sudden that I found I couldn't contain my enthusiasm. Hijikata, however, retained his composure. You're going to be accompanying whoever's on duty. You jump when they say jump, and die when they say die. Are we clear? Yes, sir. A little, little too excited about this, but at last I would be able to go outside. I would finally be able to begin searching for my father. Oh, <laughs> I think you missed the last part of that. But okay. My answers wouldn't show themselves immediately, I knew, but at least I was free to look for them. Soji, Heisuke, you're on patrol today, right? Uh, I get it now, that's why you pulled us in here, right? Oh, I'm gonna be on patrol with him, okay. The confusion that had been on his face since I'd entered lifted at last. I think it's gonna be Soji's turn this time, though. The first division's gonna do in rounds today, isn't it? Yeah, Heisuke and the Eighth are going out tonight, so I think he's got a point. She'll be safe for during the afternoon. He nodded at Heisuke, gave me a quick wink. Don't forget, if you run, I'll kill you. And if we get jumped by Ronin, I'm not sticking around to pull your ass out of the fire, okay? He wasn't being serious. But Hijikata turned his cold glare on Okita and frowned. Shut up, Okita. Stop being mean. Why the hell do you think I'm sending her with you? Okita's only response was a short snort of a laugh. I won't run. I knew he wasn't being serious, but I couldn't stand to keep my mouth shut. Because I just need to fill silences with the weird things that I say. Ah, <sighs> Chizuru. When I came here, we made a deal. I promised. The Shinsen Gumi would help me find my father, and I would keep quiet and not run away. That's not much of a deal. <laughs> it's like, somehow, somewhere along the line, we have like become the blackmailers and survived on that somehow? Okay. Uh, and the Shinsen Gumi guys, they, they weren't just like, Wait a minute. This sounds like a lot more work than it's worth. I... Uh, Alright. And I still wanted to find him, just as much as I had the day I first met the Shinsengumi. I'll keep my promise. So please, keep yours. I gave Okita a short bow, never taking my eyes off his face. The smirk that had been on his face when I'd begun had shrunk to something smaller and more than a little awkward. My apologies, I guess I underestimated you. You should realize, though, that there's no way to know what could happen out there. If you come with us, you're putting yourself in danger. If that's alright with you, then feel free to join us on our rounds. Even I knew that Kyoto was 
Not safe. But I didn't care. I had to find my father. At that moment, any possible danger seemed immaterial. Also, I thought we are like, onto the team of those who are usually the danger. But that could cause more danger. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't made a very good bed to lay in, but we're going to have to lay in it. The Choshu have been acting up. We don't know what they're up to, but chances are it's bad for us. I'd rather not be sending you out. He seemed to be almost talking to himself, but his tone was stern and thoughtful. The soldiers of the Choshu Domain were part of the Imperial Nationalist Party. They had increasingly been turning to force in their pursuit of these goals. The Shinsengumi, on the other hand, were loyal to the Shogun. Oh, interesting point. So, we're actually on the team, the, em the team of the Empire. Since their masters were at odds, the Shinsengumi and the Choshu Domain were enemies. It occurred to me that the increased activity of the Choshu Domain had likely made it difficult for the Shinsengumi to shoulder a burden such as me. So, we've got the organized crime syndicate of one group of political affiliates, the, Cho the Shogun, and the Shinsengumi, versus the Choshu Domain and their political group and their soldiers for hire and or political affiliates that are also armed or what have you. So yeah, there's definitely, there's two sides to this war and they are kind of red versus blue fighting each other. Easy, perfect. That's as simple as it can be, really. I'm wondering if there's any more people or parties to even complicate that matter, because it sounds pretty cut and dry. Why are you giving me permission to leave the compound at a time like this, then? <laughs> I could just, you know, stay. <laughs> or you could just let me go on faith. Wink! He just got his face hardened, and he looked away. And that's not all that hardened. Wink! It was also his steely eyes. Kodo hasn't gone back to Edo. We've heard that a couple people saw someone around Kyoto. It might not be him, but it matches his description. Besides, if I've, I've kept you locked up for almost half a year, damn! I thought, I thought I was like adding up those months wrong, or like maybe I missed something, but yeah, it has been six months. And just, this is the most interesting that, thing that happened that's worth story noteworthiness. The Choshu are a threat, but it wasn't them. It'd be something else. I have to let you out sometime or you'll never find anything. Okay. <laughs> wasn't what I'd expected to hear from him after six months of imprisonment. He was right that they'd postponed my search for my father for quite some time. Actually, a good fraction of my lifetime at this point. What I hadn't expected was that he would give any thought to my feelings on the matter. Um, thank you very much. I bowed as I spoke, not sure what else I could do to express my gratitude. Hijikata only turned back to his work. Besides, plenty of our guys aren't feeling so hot these days. We aren't exactly in tough condition, are we? Heisuke's joking didn't seem to appeal to Hijikata, who only frowned more deeply. Well, it has been awful hot lately. Thanks, Chizuru. As always, your input is valuable. Couldn't do it without you. And it certainly had been. Day after day, the sun burned down on Kyoto from the cloudless, sly, cloudless sky or a cloudless sly, and all of the rooms in the compound were so humid that I felt dizzy as soon as I stepped inside. I had heard that the heat had even been too much for some of the Shinsengumi's soldiers, and they'd taken ill. If you want to go, you can go. You have my permission. Bye. Right. Cool. Sat there for a moment, considered my options. There was something in his words and demeanor that told me he didn't want me to leave the compound. Still, if I was with Okido or Heisuke, I had no doubt that I'd be safe and well protected. On the other hand, my presence could easily be un an undue burden to them. What should I do? So, we are at a crossroads, and this is intensely a dating sim crossroads. Remain in the compound, I am with one group of boys leave the compound, and I'm with the other group of boys. And as much as I don't, I feel like somehow, somewhere along these lines, I've put a lot of effort into Heisuke on accident, despite best efforts, and alternatively, I mean, I would like to try to avoid that, but if I 
if I waffle between people too much, I have a chance of not getting any ending at all, knowing dating sims, and getting a, something worse, like in the middle. Just remembering all those times and all those other sims where I waffled too much and ended up dead. I don't want to waffle, so I might want to just commit, leave and search for my father, try to not get haste K and maybe go for Okido? That would, that would be pretty great. That'd be pretty rad, I'd be enjoying it with that. But I'd also like to see everyone else, so I don't know. I think I'm gonna leave and search for my father, because, you know, we're just gonna go along with it. I, I'm gonna go with the devil I know rather than the devil I don't know. I think that makes sense to me. Oh my gosh! The streets were full packed with people. We haven't seen human beings in six months. Only a frat house. Nothing strange in a busy city, of course, but I could feel my heart beating faster all the same. Don't get too excited there, Chizuru. We're out here for business, not fun, remember? Sarai's smile was a friendly warning, but I shrunk back, cowed, and looked back at him meekly. I... the city's just so... so busy. I guess I just couldn't help myself. Getting worked off of a busy city street was a silly thing for anyone to do, and we both knew it. But I'd been inside for so long, just the sight of crowds was enough to get my blood pumping. Okita looked down at me and grinned. Well, the, G uh, well, the Gion Festival's coming up. Things are a little more lively than usual, I'll give you that. Of course. Oh, of course, some of these nationalist ronin are acting pretty suspicious too. What I'm saying is watch yourself, alright? Okay. When cute boys say jump, I ask, how high? How high? We were walking down Kyoto's largest street, accompanied by the first division. No one came within a few yards of us as we walked. They stepped away the moment their eyes caught the bright blue of the Shinsengumi's jackets. Even the people of Kyoto fear the Shinsengumi. Um, excuse me. I paused every so often to ask some of the less intimidated passerbys if they might have seen my father. I'm looking for someone. He's in his 40s, speaks with an Edo accent. His head is shaved, but he looks friendly. He's a doctor, too. After several regretful apologies, I came across someone who claimed to have seen a man matching my description. Oh yeah, I think I might have seen that guy a while back, over in Masu's. As he spoke, he pointed towards a store selling wood and charcoal. Thank you! Of course, I told myself, it could be someone who only looks like my father. Then again, perhaps it was my father. Okita caught my eye and gave me a stern look. He opened his mouth, presumably to reprimand me, when all of a sudden... You there, you Ronin, give us the name of your lord, if indeed you even serve one. The cry went up from one of the Shinshingumi's soldiers, and Okita turned, his mouth tightened into a thin line. Okay, <laughs> dang, alright. Well, shit. I guess they would choose the worst possible time to stir up trouble, wouldn't they? His hands dropped to his sword. As he ran toward the commotion, townsfolk screamed and ran, like leaves before a gale. Whoa! whoa. In the sudden press of the fleeing citizens, I found myself pulled away from Okita. Ha! Ah, from a moment, I panicked, but soon realized that perhaps it was the best. Whatever you say, Chizuru, you just keep doing your own thing. You're the best. Hey, it's this place again. If I'd stayed close, he would have been forced to keep half his attention on me. I didn't want to distract him, so I ran to a nearby alley to watch. Once the situation was resolved, I could make my way back to the first division. That sure is thinking, kid. Hey kid, come over here. You don't want to get yourself caught up in that. Or? I paused for a moment. A strange man was inviting me into his house. Not strange on the face of it, perhaps, but I had been warned many times to be on my guard. I was about to politely refuse when I realized which store it was, the one the man point earlier had pointed to. Um, excuse me, is this Masu's? Yes it is! He nodded. Great! You see, I'm looking for someone, and... Mr. Kamon, I just saw the kid with Okita, the Shinsengumi captain! What? What? The Shinsengumi run for it! There was a mad scramble for the door, and in moments the store was empty of customers. What? True, I had been accompanying the Shinsengumi, 
but the reaction of the store's customers seemed excessive. You really have the worst luck, don't you? Still, I guess you could say the same thing about them and me. He gave a small, unconcerned shrug, leapt through the door of the shop. Masu's exploded with the sounds of sword play, with men swearing and scrambling across furniture for position. What? What on earth had just happened? 